Welcome back to the channel. I'm EZP40. Today we're just going to have a little bit of a talk about some uh, BO4 weapons. I haven't addressed them that much in my previous videos, and I did talk about how I was going to make a Black Ops 4 weapon rigging, which I am going to do at some point. On and off, I started this probably in, I think it was October, and I've been kind of on and off these past few months uh, working on it and whatnot. Most of the work that I did in 2023, like at the end of 2023, was mainly just like testing stuff, not actually playing the game like in a normal fashion, but more so like getting a gun, pack-a-punching it, testing the rate of fire, testing the damage, and trying to like split up the zombies. It wasn't a normal way of playing the game. It was m much more research-wise rather than actual playing. However, the past couple weeks or so, ever since I made the BO3 weapon uh, rigging, I've just been kind of playing some Black Ops 4 zombies here and there, um, hopping on whenever I can. And just kind of hop it on and just play in the game just how I would usually play it with regular weapons. And one thing I, I definitely have been doing is I have been trying to see if there's any bit of research that I can find um, online on the internet. And there's just not much at all. And so a lot of this is going to have to come down to me trying to figure out exactly some of these statistics and some of these facts about these weapons in the game itself which is going to take a while. Granted, I have worked on this for a while, but there's still stuff that I need to figure out with almost every single weapon in the game. I do have the damages. I do have the rate of fires um, for the most part. Uh, I need to work on the mobility of the weapons. I've had a couple questions about what will happen when testing the weapons compared to older games, because in older games, there was no double tap, or well, I didn't allow double tap anyway, and I would just pack punch the weapon once. And so people were asking me, well, what about pack a punch in Black Ops 4? You have to pack a punch like four or five times in order to get the full effect. But the thing is, that's not true. With pack a punch weapons in Black Ops 4, in order to get the basic pack a punch effect, you just need to pack a punch it once. And so with weapons that I test in Black Ops 4, I just take the weapon, I put it in the pack a punch machine once, and then I just use the weapon. There is no need to double pack a punch. It's just the basic weapon that it is when upgraded. Basically, um, Black Ops 4 is more similar to Black Ops 3 than any other of the uh, Call of Duty Zombies. So when I compare the weapons, uh, there's a few of them that are similar or the same as BO3 weapons. For example, um, the ICR and the KN57 from Black Ops 4, um, they are basically the same thing as the Black Ops 3 versions of the ICR and the KN44. The ICR1 and the ICR7, the BO3 version and the BO4 version. Headshot damage is the exact same or almost identical they one shot headshot on the same round and their knockoff to the head is also on the same round being round 12 and this is without double tap or any extra abilities or anything like that they have the same ammo they shoot the same rate of fire they're both fairly similar in terms of just their tendencies in terms of accuracy and just how they work in general there's like a couple of uh differences in terms of just like the way they feel and and like the way they look but in terms of their performance these statistics are I, pretty much identical, and so when it comes to that, you can pretty much tell that a single pack-a-punch is going to be the same as it would be in the other games. But I think it's good to have guns like the ICR to compare to BO3 because it really gives you a starting point to really see how things are with the weapons in this game. Because BO4 probably does have the most unique weapons in the series, at least in terms of base weapons. There's a lot of things that you have to take into account, um, and granted, I know with it being in the series um, and not having attachments, I know that probably does take away from some of it. One thing that I definitely have seen over the years, and I still hear it to this day, is with people talking about Black Ops 4 weapons, they always say, man, Black Ops 4 weapons, they're just so weak. Compared to older weapons, and they're just, they don't kill on high rounds. They fall off, they're so weak. And you take a look at the stats, and you see how they are similar to Black Ops 3, which has the best performing weapons in the series. And so when you take those two into account, you start to see that it doesn't make any sense. Like, you have one side that says it doesn't perform well. You get in the game, and you actually do see some, some times where, man, it, it doesn't kill that quickly. And then you go into another side, and you look at, you look at the statistics. You look at the pure base statistics. Right, which I know you guys can't because you guys don't know the freaking statistics, but I do. I'm telling you right now, the stats, not quite as good as BO3, 
but they are really good. So when you take that into account, and you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why do they kill so slowly then? And after weeks and weeks of research um, on j just this question in particular, right? Because I, I didn't know this in 2023 because I wasn't playing the game as normally. I was playing it more in a way that would just test the weapon's headshot damage, uh, the rate of fire and stuff like that. It was I was basically not even playing zombies. I was just running a couple of tests. Basically, the thing that is making the weapons in BO4 perform at a lesser rate is the penetration power. The penetration power in Black Ops 4 Zombies is almost non-existent. Something you saw probably in the BO3 ranking was I talked about the collateral damage, and I talked about the importance of it. With penetration power, it really, really matters when you're trying to get kills because the amount of ammo you can save depending on how good your weapon is in the collateral damage department is going to be incredibly important. So when you go into BO4 and you use the weapons, right? And you kill one zombie, one zombie. You're going to kill that zombie quickly. But then you've got a line of like 10 zombies and you'll, you'll kill the first couple pretty quickly. And those other ones are going to get to you really, really quickly. You're going to hit two, three times. You're going to have to run away, right? It's because of the penetration power. The penetration power, regardless of what weapon class you are using, snipers, ARs, SMGs, LMGs, shotguns, doesn't matter. The penetration power is terrible on every gun, which is why guns like the Helion Salvo are so important. Not just because there's a lack of, lack of penetration power, but also just because the Helion Salvo is just freaking goaded. One thing that sucks about penetration power is that when it comes to pure stats, there's no way for me to identify exactly how much penetration power a weapon has. Because when it comes to online research and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't exist. So I have to look at the gun itself, I have to use it, I have to judge the weapon's penetration power based off how I feel it, and I don't like doing that because then I have to get a feeling of things, and I'm not giving you a pure factual standpoint of what it's like, I'm just giving you a base opinion based off of what I have researched in game and played in the game. So that's going to be a bit tricky when comparing the weapons. If you really want to know just the difference between the penetration power of BO3 and BO4, the best way that I could do this was I took two weapons, the ICR and the KN44 or the KN37 and BO4. And basically what I would do is I would go on the same round and I would test the two different weapons and I would get a horde of 24 and I would see how many bullets would it take to kill a horde of 24 or better yet how many bullets would it take to kill a full round when I compare the two it was very apparent and I'll probably have the numbers on screen by the time I edit this video I'll probably run the test and give exact numbers but right now I don't have the test results at the moment but it was just very brief and I know that it's very true but when you look at the results you will see the penetration power is massively different and before you say hey maybe it's a health problem no it's not the health problem they have the same damage on the same rounds it's not a health problem at all zombie health weapon damage any of that it's not an issue the zombie health is the same as bo3s up until round 35 in normal mode when you take that into account you start to see that the penetration power really starts to become a big deal because the efficiency of the bo4 weapons is going to fall short of all the other games not only that but the zombies aren't going to die as quickly because the lack of penetration power. So they're not going to be as safe to use. So I've been kind of in a pickle the past couple weeks because I'm like, man, BO4 weapons, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to compare to older games. Honestly, the more that I've thought about it, yes, I can compare them to older games. It is going to be very difficult, but I could do that. Or I could just make their own separate list, make it a lot easier. So I've been kind of having that debate in my head for the past few weeks or so, kind of been contemplating that. But I was like, hmm, if I do that, if I split them up, make it its own category, don't have it involved in the weapon ranking series, then I can add attachments. Then I can add all of the perks in the game because some of the perks would be restricted in the weapon ranking series. All the attachments would be restricted in the weapon ranking series. So there's more flexibility 
if I make it into its own category. Not only that, but with BO4 zombies, it does act a little bit differently because the zombie spread is a little bit different. The lack of penetration power, obviously. And when you take into account that just how the maps work and whatnot and how the game works just in general, you start to see maybe it is better just to have a separate category for it. And so I've been leaning a little bit towards that. That's what I've been kind of debating for the past couple of weeks. And so right now I'm leaning towards just making its own category, even though I would like to have it in the weapon ranking series, the way it would fit into that would be not, it wouldn't fit very well into that series at all. In all honesty, the more I research it, the more differences I find compared to those older games. Because at first I thought, all I got to do is just the health system and make sure that there's no advantage in the perk system. Other than that, the BO4 weapons should be able to be compared to the older weapons. However, with the lack of penetration power and with some of the other changes I've found, I start to lean more towards making it into its own category. One thing's for sure, I'm going to make a BO4 list. I, may, I plan on making multiple BO4 videos just in general on this channel. Because I do like the game, and I would love to talk about it, and I would love to research and dive deeper into Black Ops 4, because it is a very fun game, and I have a great time in it. But the more I research into this topic, the more confident I am that I need to make it into its own category, rather than comparing it to the older games. Because it is a lot different. And the more I research, the more I find that supports that it's just way different than the older games. Now that the BO4 weapons out of the way, the that kind of topic for today. I also want to go over some mobility stuff because in the last video, I said that the next video would be a video based off of mobility. Well, that's kind of an issue. Mobility is extremely difficult to figure out because it's just extremely tedious. And because of that and the way I test stuff, which is just in the game on my Xbox, I have to get all the weapons. I have to pack punch them. Um, I have to test them without Pack Punch and with Pack Punch for the series that I'm wanting to do with mobility. And that's going to take a long time. That's not going to be something that I'm able to get done in a couple weeks or so. It's going to take a lot of time. And so I've considered splitting up the series between the games themselves. Originally, I was just like, I'm just going to make a video based off all the games and all the mobilities in the games. Probably not going to happen. If that does happen, the video is not going to be out for at least a month or two at bare minimum. Um, so what I thought about doing was just maybe I should just split them up into um, BO3 mobility video, BO2 mobility video, and then that way whenever people research it and want to know what the mobility is like in the games, um, they can just very quickly go to the video that they need because not everybody plays all of the zombie games. Some are just BO3 players, some are just World at War players, some are just BO1 players, BO2 players, you know, all that kind of stuff. I do intend on finding the mobility of the wonder weapons as well. And so when I make the videos based off of that, I will find the mobility of the wonder weapons too. And when that comes into account, I will go into unpack punched weapons and pack punched weapons. It is going to take a while and I'm obviously going to include stamina up as well, but that is going to take a while. And so because of that, that series is going to be a little bit delayed because of just how much research I'm going to have to do. If you don't see anything on that, it's not because I've abandoned it or forgot about it. It's just because I'm still working on it and it's going to take a while. So I just wanted to update you guys today because I haven't posted a video in a couple of weeks and I've been really, really busy both in real life and just like trying to research stuff for videos and whatnot. I would like to hear your uh, opinion on all this that I've talked about today uh, with BO4 weapons, with, with mobility, all that kind of stuff. Um, I do intend on hopefully getting the BO4 weapon rigging out probably sometime in late March. I originally I, I originally hoped to get it out before March, but dude, there's just, there's so much research I got to do. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to, and also I have to take into account what am I going to rank? Am I going to rank them without attachments or am I going to rank them in its own separate category? Because that changes the ranking dramatically. Because if I rank it in its own category, then I take into account all of the attachments, including the operator mods, yeah, I'd like to know your opinion on this. I, I think it's uh, it's an interesting topic, to say the least. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Um, if you guys got questions, ask. That's fine. I'm going to be playing a lot of BO4 probably for the next few weeks, trying to figure out exactly what I'm going to do with this. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. All right. I'll talk to you all later. See ya.